So imagine we have two theorems that have the same conclusion but different assumptions. So the first one is that assumption A1 implies B. And the second theorem is assumption A2 implies B. And to be concrete, imagine A1 is the statement that the city we are interested in is in Missouri. So this is A1. And A2 is that the city is somewhere in the United States. So that's A2. And uh, for our purposes, B doesn't really matter, but you could imagine it's something like uh, the city is somewhere in the northern hemisphere, so B is even outside of that. So in this case, we can compare A1 and A2, and notice that in this example, A1 implies A2. Or in other words, A1 is a stronger assumption than A2, or a more restrictive assumption than A2, as it hopefully looks in the picture. So, and usually stronger might sound like it's better, but in terms of theorems and assumptions, we prefer weaker assumptions because it means our theorem will apply more generally to a wider variety of situations. In this particular example, we can see our first version of the theorem with A1 only applies to cities in Missouri, whereas the second version of the theorem applies to a lot of other cities too. For example, Houston down here. If we knew, um, if we were considering Houston and we wanted to know is Houston in the Northern Hemisphere, or in other words, is B true, if we only had the first version of the theorem, we would first look at our assumption A1 and say, well, A1 is not true because Houston is not in Missouri, so therefore our theorem does not apply. It doesn't say that B is false, it doesn't say that B is true, it just says we don't know whether or not B is true because our assumption A1 is not satisfied. In contrast, A2 is satisfied, so the second version of the theorem does apply and lets us conclude that B is also true. So in this case, and in general, we prefer the weaker set of assumptions because uh, they let us apply our theorem in a wider variety of settings.